Good morning, friends. Before starting the live streaming, just the usual introduction. This mass is being live streamed from the church at St. Gerard's Monastery with the participation of the community here. We remember that this is a resident community. This is our self-contained home, even as we now descend to level three with more joy and eagerness, we offer this celebration to you as well, that even as you plan ahead, we may still remember our need for God, our desire for him. Let us start in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate a very beautiful saint, even for us as ICP mission, we love to quote Saint Catherine of Siena saying, be who you are meant to be and you will set the world on fire. This was also the saint who said, all the way to heaven is heaven, because Jesus tells us, I am the way. Does it feel like heaven now? If no, then we should pray this for this saint to intercede for us, that she may show us that, yes, when we follow our Lord, our shepherd with undivided hearts, then we will be filled with joy, the joy that we will hear about in today's first reading. So let us ask for this gift of joy today, that the joy will burn us first, will set us on fire, so that we can truly set the world on fire, that we will be enthusiastic, even as we prayed yesterday, that there will be that enthusiasm in us as we live our lives. Let us bring into this prayer even so many people who feel they are just existing, because they have an, a divided heart. Let us pray that all those who follow the Lord will do so with undivided hearts. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, you set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's Passion and in her service of your Church. Grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. From the Acts of the Apostles That day a bitter persecution started against the church in Jerusalem, and everyone except the apostles fled to the countries, districts of Judea and Samaria. There were some devout people, however, who buried Stephen and made great mourning for him. Saul then worked for the total destruction of the church. He went from house to house, arresting both men and women and sending them to prison. Those who had escaped went from place to place, preaching the good news. One of them was Philip, who went to a Samaritan town and proclaimed the Christ to them. The people united in welcoming the message Philip preached, either because they had heard of the miracles he worked or because they saw them for themselves. There were, for example, unclean spirits that came shrieking out of many who were possessed, and sev several paralytics and cripples were cured. There was great rejoicing in that town as a result. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, <coughs> let all the earth cry out to God with joy. 
Let, Let all, all the earth, earth cry out with to God, God with, with joy. joy. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Sing to the Lord to the glory of His name. O render Him glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous your deeds. Let, Let all, all the earth, earth cry out to God, to God with joy. joy. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and see the works of God, tremendous his deeds among men. Let, Let all, all the, the earth, earth cry out to God, God with joy. He turned the sea into dry land, they passed through the river dry shod. Let our joy then be in him. He rules forever by his might. Let, Let all, all the earth, earth cry out, out to God, God with joy. joy. Kindly rise for the acclamation. Alleluia. Alleluia. Then you have been raised with Christ. Seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never thirst. But as I have told you, you can see me and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I shall not term, turn him away, because I have come from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. Now the will of him who sent me is that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Yes, it is my Father's will that whoever sees the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. To this very unknown and uneducated woman, in the 14th century, Jesus chose to reveal himself. And in 1970, the church proclaimed her a doctor of the church. Sometimes it's useful to see the journey the saints made themselves. Because sometimes we see a saint and we say, oh, how can I ever be like that? But then you look a bit in the story and you say, this was a very uneducated woman, uh, this, the youngest daughter of a very large family with no prospects in life except to get married. In fact, they had already arranged a marriage for her, but she refused. From a very young age, she had already decided to follow Christ, her lover, with an undivided heart. And it was such a beautiful prayer, one of the intercessions during morning prayer today, that the virgin saints follow Christ with undivided hearts. They were not distracted by anything in the world. So that can be a very useful prayer for us too. And in one of her dialogues with Jesus, he tells her, I want you to follow me with what is infinite in you. But in you there is nothing infinite except the desires of your heart, which is very beautiful. Because we know that we all have desires. Some desires remain unfulfilled because the deepest desire is to receive infinite love. And that is a desire that only God 
can fulfill. In the 14th century, St. Catherine had a very long correspondence with the Pope at that time, who was in Avignon, he had left Rome. The church at that time was like a club. Many people were in, even without knowing it and without knowing why. Sometimes it can be the same even for us today. Many people consider themselves Catholic and Christian without even knowing why. That this is a journey leading to something beyond imagining. Even while Jesus speaks today about the Eucharist giving himself and leading us to eternal life. This is not just a belonging, having a ticket in your hand. This is something that takes up the whole of us. That we are to follow the Lord with undivided hearts. Not just a part of me is following, but the whole of me. So even the saint had this sort of missionary outlook on the church. It was not just uh, the small parish or the small country. She was concerned with the whole church. She used to tell the Lord, Lord, squeeze my heart over the face of your church so that that face can become beautiful again. And so even as we hear Jesus' words today about the Eucharist, it can be so easy to think of the Eucharist as something we receive. But what is coming out of me? Am I like squeezing a stone? Can you squeeze a stone? You will end up hurting yourself. Does God hurt himself trying to squeeze something out of me? What is coming out of me? Am I like a sponge that absorbs, but then when you squeeze, a lot will come out? What is coming out of me? Do I have this Eucharistic generosity? And the only way that comes is if I am following Lord, the Lord with an undivided heart, with what is infinite in me. That even as I become aware of desires, as we said, some of them remain unfulfilled, even because the Lord closes doors. Sometimes, yesterday we were, that image struck me. The disciples washing their nets, they were preparing. Sometimes the Lord closes doors in our life to help us to wash our desires, our needs, so that we can say, okay, this apparently is not important. Let, let me not waste time with this. Let me try something else. And that is the journey we move on. Sometimes our journey in moving on in life, the journey in life is not something neat and tidy. It can be full of knots and dead ends and the reversals. But that is the journey, and the beautiful thing is that Jesus is accompanying us as food on the way. But at the same time, our life has also to be a life lived in abundance, like that joy we heard about in the first reading. There was great joy in that town. Why? Because that man, Philip, decided to squeeze himself, to give of himself. So yes, let us pray that when we feel squeezed, when we feel that we have to stretch a bit, we do not do so with long faces. I mean, Benilda today read the, the sun very beautifully, but even that sun, no, we, we could have read it. Uh, let me find. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. I mean, we can read it like that. Benilda didn't read it like that, but thank God. Eh? Once in, in Malta there is uh, that song, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. And the way it was read, it, was, it meant the opposite. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack everything. Come on, let us be filled with joy. Let us cry out to the Lord with joy. And the joy comes when we allow things to flow out from our hearts. So let everything that happens today be done with a glad heart with a joyful heart, convinced that Jesus is giving us of himself and he is also asking us to give of ourselves so that our belonging, our discipleship may not be sterile, may not be just a belonging, any belonging, but it can be a true participation in his living body. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us stand. Lord, as we cry out with joy to you at the beginning of this day, 
even those following from their homes, now is the time to cry out to our God. You know your needs, God knows them too, but he wants us to put words to what we need. Let us ask, especially for what is infinite, for what is greater than ourselves, to give God space to work out his marvelous deeds. Lord, our first prayer is for an expectant faith, an eager faith, a faith that dares to believe even in things that are impossible, because once you speak in the depths of our heart, you set us on fire, and you never forget, Lord, what you promise us. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Lord, even as businesses are reopening and people are being asked to show up for work when they may be feeling unsure about doing so, Lord, we pray for any fears, any anxieties that your spirit may encourage, may give wisdom, may give strength. For this we pray to the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness. We have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness. We have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine of Siena, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrate themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with the angels and saints in heaven, here on earth, as we lift our voices and praise you, without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, with St. Catherine of Siena and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my own peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. In the name of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the bread of life, the one sent to bring us to life the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we join together in praying the prayer of spiritual communion, let us focus on our desire to be in union with God and with one another, the desire never to be separated from Him, that in all our choices, choices we take lightly, choices we worry about, choices that may be forced on us, we pray that nothing can separate us from our Lord, who gave himself for us. And at the same time, let us ask for the desire that we do anything that he asks of us. Once convinced that it is he, we will do everything for him. Jesus, my Lord, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come nevertheless and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, make it like your own. 
I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself completely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us.